Welcome back to my channel. This will be the second part of what if Goku was half Viltrumite. There are a few things I want to make clear about this story. I am aware that the Viltrumite DNA overrides weaker strains of weaker species. But if we look at Oliver for example, he retains his intelligence from his Thrax inheritance. I believe a Saiyan Viltrumite hybrid will be able to use abilities that come from being a Saiyan to their full potential. Personally, I think this hybrid will be more powerful than a human Saiyan hybrid. But I'll let you guys debate on that topic. If we were to go back Dragon Ball logic, hybrids are stronger than our predecessors. So what will be the fun of this story if he just loses his Saiyan ability? Now onto the story. The years pass. During the time skip, Goku underwent rigorous training under Kami at the lookout, just as in the original timeline. When the next World Martial Arts Tournament rolled around, Goku was reunited with his friends, eager to showcase the fruits of his training. In the first round, Goku found himself against a mysterious woman who seemed to recognize him. She boldly claimed that Goku had promised to marry her a long time ago. Confused, Goku scratched his head, trying to recall such a promise, but nothing came to mind. Frustrated, the woman challenged Goku. If he could defeat her, she would reveal her name. Goku, as confident as ever, smirked and unleashed a burst of pressurized air, knocking her out of the ring without any effort. Amazed by Goku's strength, the woman finally revealed her name, Chi Chi. At that moment, Goku remembered who she was and admitted with a sheepish grin that he had misunderstood what marriage was back then thinking it was some kind of food. Despite the misunderstanding, Goku honored the promise and agreed to marry her, sealing their future together. The tournament progresses, and in the semifinals, Goku faced Tien once more. Tien had come prepared, determined to showcase his true speed and power. As the fight began, Tien seemed to dominate, landing several quick blows and expertly de evading Goku's attacks. The crowd watched in awe as Tien displayed his incredible skills. But Goku, ever the strategist, had something up his sleeve. Goku asked Tien if he could remove some of his clothing, which puzzled Tien. But the shock came when Goku revealed that his boots, wristbands, and undershirt were all heavily weighted, each piece contributing to a total of 400 pounds. The audience gasped, and Tien's confidence began to waver. With the burden of the weights removed, Goku's speed increased exponentially. Tien was struggling to keep up. Goku zipped around the arena, dodging every attack with ease, his movements becoming a blur to both Tien and the crowd. Realizing he was outclassed, Tien resorted to his secret weapon, the multi-form technique. With a burst of energy, Tien divided himself into four separate bodies, each capable of independent thought and action. The four Tiens quickly spread out to the corners of the arena, preparing to trap Goku. As Goku leapt into the air to avoid the impending blast, the Tiens unleashed their attacks simultaneously. Each one fired a blast from the third eye, hitting Goku, setting him crashing to the arena floor. For a moment, it seemed like Tien had the upper hand, but Goku wasn't down for long. He quickly recovered and got back to his feet. He was determined. With a swift movement, Goku unleashed a solar flare technique, momentarily blinding Tien and all his clones. Seizing the opportunity, Goku dashed forward with perfect precision and knocking them out of the ring one by one. The crowd erupted into cheers as the last of Tien's clones fell. Tien, once again bested by Goku, acknowledged his rival's overwhelming power with a respectful nod. Goku had earned his place in the final round. The final round had arrived. Goku and Piccolo stood across from each other, the tension palpable. Piccolo, filled with hatred and a thirst for, for revenge, swore to kill Goku and avenge his father, King Piccolo. But Goku was unfazed by this. As soon as the bell rang, Goku and Piccolo launched at each other, exchanging powerful blows. The sheer force of their strikes created shockwaves that sent ripples through the arena. Piccolo, determined to end Goku's life, unleashed a powerful energy blast aimed at destroying both the arena and the spectators. But Goku was ready. He swiftly deflected the blast, protecting everyone in the arena. Furious, Piccolo attempted the same attack, but this time, Goku countered with a devastating Super Kamehameha. The beam collided with Piccolo's attack, reflecting it right back at him. Piccolo was caught off guard as the energy scorched his body, tearing away his clothes and revealing his true identity to the crowd. Without the turban, the crowd finally recognized Piccolo Jr. 
as a reincarnation of King Piccolo, and they fled in terror. For Goku, this worked in his favor. He no longer had to worry about protecting the bystanders. Piccolo, enraged, decided to use his trump card. He grew in size, towering over Goku like a giant. Goku smirked and told Piccolo that becoming larger only made him an easier target. Without hesitation, Goku powered up and delivered a devastating punch straight to Piccolo's chest, leaving a gaping hole in, in the demon's body. Piccolo, stunned by attack, immediately began to regenerate. Though he managed to heal himself, the effort left him drained of a significant amount of energy and his fury only grew. Desperate to turn the tide, Piccolo unleashed a homing key blast that chased Goku around the arena. But Goku, ever the tactical fighter, outmaneuvered Piccolo once again. He dashed behind Piccolo, causing the blast to redirect and hit Piccolo instead. The explosion severely damaged Piccolo's arm, forcing him to tear it off and grow a new one. Now blinded by rage, Piccolo used one of his most dangerous attacks, a massive explosion that emanated from his body, intended to obliterate everything around him. Despite pouring a tremendous amount of energy into the attack, it barely affected Goku. Seeing Piccolo in this exotic state, Goku knew the time had come to finish the battle. With Piccolo weakened, Goku unleashed a relentless series of attacks, each one landing with pinpoint precision. The final blow came in the form of a powerful Kamehameha, sending Piccolo flying out of the ring. With that, Goku was declared the winner of the World Martial Arts Tournament. As the crowd cheered, Yajirobe approached Goku and handed him a sensu bean, instantly healing the damage he had taken during the fight. Meanwhile, Kami, having watched the entire battle unfold, descended from the lookout and approached Piccolo's unconscious form. Kami, determined to end Piccolo once and for all, prepared to deliver the final blow. But to everyone's shock, Goku intervened. He stopped Kami and instead offered Piccolo a sensu bean, restoring the demon to full health. Piccolo was bewildered by Goku's mercy and rose to his feet and glared at his rival with pure hatred. Despite the healing, his pride was wounded. One day, I will destroy you, Goku, Piccolo snarled before flying off into the distance. Five years have passed since Goku's victory at the War Martial Arts Tournament and much had changed. Goku was no longer just a martial artist, he was now a father. At Kame House, Bama, Krillin, and Master Roshi were enjoying a peaceful reunion, completely unaware of the storm that was approaching. Goku arrived at Kame House, carrying a small child in his arms. Bama, Krillin, and Master Roshi stared in disbelief. Goku had a kid. They will soon learn that the kid's name was Gohan. Somewhere else, two pods hurtled down to earth, landing in a distant field. Unbeknownst to Goku and his friends, the Saiyan Raditz and the Vilgemont warrior Vidor had arrived. The duo first encountered a farmer, but their scouts immediately picked up a stronger power level in the distance. This led them to straight to Piccolo, who stood on guard, confused by their presence. What is a Namekian doing here? Vidor curiously asked. Namekian? What are you talking about? Piccolo narrowed his eyes. Before Piccolo could get any answers, Raditz's scatter detected an even stronger power level nearby. Raditz and Vidor left Piccolo in the dust, flying towards Master Roche's island. Curiosity got the best of Piccolo, and he followed them, wondering what these strange people wanted. When Raditz and Vidor landed, at Kamen House, everyone froze. Goku immediately noticed the tail wrapped around Raditz's waist. It was just like the one he used to have, but his confusion deepened when Raditz called him Kakarot. Well, Kakarot, it looks like you've forgotten your mission, Raditz said smirking. Kakarot, my name is Goku, he said confused. Vidor crossed his arms, looking unimpressed. You didn't complete your mission, and now look at you living among these weaklings. Raditz revealed he was Goku's brother, which left Goku stunned. He explained that he remembered Bardock, their father, telling him that Goku was not just a Saiyan. He was also a Viltrumite, a member of a powerful race of people that shared many similarities with the Saiyan. Together, the saiyan Viltrumite Alliance had a mission to conquer planets and expand their influence for the Frieza Force. Goku had a serious expression on his face. I don't care who you are or where I come from. I'm not destroying this planet or its people. You need to leave. Vidor notices Gohan. And who is this? Gohan clung to Goku's leg. Raditz's eyes narrowed as he realized what had happened. So you procreated with these humans? Interesting. I wonder how powerful the child is. Raditz's scouter read Goku's power level at 500, which he scoffed at. He taunted Goku, saying he had gotten soft and weak living on Earth. Goku once again tells them to leave the planet. Fedor, growing impatient with Goku's divines, suddenly attacked, moving faster than Goku had anticipated. But while Goku fended off Fedor's attack, 
Raditz took his chance. He pushes Krillin out of the way and grabbed Gohan, kidnapping him and flying off. Goku's heart pounded as he saw Raditz take his son. His body trembled and his fury erupted like never before. He powered up, his aura surging wildly as his power level skyrocketed from 500 to 20,000. Virgo was shocked. He watched in disbelief. Impossible. His power jumped that much? Goku did not waste any time. With lightning speed, he attacked Vidor, easily overpowering the Vichamai warrior. Vidor was shocked by Goku's raw power. He had no other choice but to defend himself, but he couldn't. Goku delivered a series of devastating blows. He threw Vidor in the air and fired a Kamehameha, which completely decimated Vidor, leaving nothing behind. Krillin, Bulma, and Master Roshi were at a loss for words. Goku was no longer in the right state of mind. It was as if he was now bloodlusted. Goku growled, You made a mistake messing with my family. With Vidar gone, Goku took off into the sky determined to save his son and confront his brother, Raditz. Piccolo, who had witnessed the entire exchange, couldn't believe what he had just seen. The power that Goku unleashed was beyond anything he had expected. As Goku sped towards Raditz's location, a familiar presence caught up to him. It was Piccolo. With his usual scowl, he flew besides Goku. The two of them were not allies, but the situation had forced them into an uneasy partnership. We have a common enemy now, Goku. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm only helping because he will get in my way of my plans to rule this planet. The two warriors flew in silence, their focus sharp as they neared the location. As they landed, they spotted Gohan trapped inside of a pod, and standing next to it was Raditz, arms crossed and smirking. Vidor is dead. Isn't he? Raditz would question. Goku nodded calmly. Yes, he simply answered. I don't care if you're my brother. You're not going to come to my planet, threaten me, or hurt my family, he said fiercely. Raditz's smirk faded slightly as he checked his scatter again. Goku's power level was over 20,000, and Piccolo sat at 1,200, just below Raditz's 1,600. Raditz gritted his teeth. This can't be right. My scatter must be bugging. Before Raditz could react further, Goku and Piccolo launched their attack. Raditz was caught off guard by their speed. Goku's blows were precise, while Piccolo's relentless assaults left Raditz no room to counter. In mere seconds, Raditz was on the ground, battered and gasping for breath. Goku rushes to Gohan in the pod. I've got you, Gohan, he says. As Goku pulled Gohan from the pod, Piccolo, still filled with bloodlust, moved to finish Raditz. But before Piccolo could strike, Raditz, beaten and weakened, crushed his scatter with a trembling hand, shattering it into pieces. Through labored breaths, he revealed one final chilling truth. You think you've won? In one year, two more Saiyans, two more Viltrumites, much stronger than me and Vidor, will arrive. You are all dead. He continued, Kakarot, you're strong for a hybrid. You have so much potential, but you are a fool. For a moment, Goku stared down at his brother. Contemplating, he saw the hatred in Raditz's eyes, but also saw the opportunity to let him go. If there were bigger threats coming, killing Raditz now would not stop that. I'm not like you, Raditz. I won't kill you. You can go. But if you ever come back, Raditz cuts him off, chuckling. You're soft. You regret this. Raditz crawled into his pod, injured and barely able to move, but he managed to climb in. With a final glare at Goku and Piccolo, he launched into space his pod disappearing into the sky. Piccolo grits his teeth. You let him go. You are a fool. We have bigger problems. Two Saiyans and two Viltrumites are coming. We have one year to get stronger, Piccolo. Goku would tell him. As Goku said this, a sudden voice echoed inside his mind. It was calm but authoritative, and Goku immediately recognized it wasn't coming from anyone nearby. Hello, my name is King Kai. Goku, I've been watching. I think I can be of assistance in your training. If you want to stand a chance against these invaders, you will need my help. Goku looked determined, knowing he had to prepare for the next fight of his life. With Piccolo beside him and a mysterious King Kai offering his assistance, Goku's next journey was about to begin. Goku grins at Piccolo. Looks like we got some serious training to do. Smirking slightly, Piccolo says, Yeah, don't get in my way. And that will be it for this part of What If Goku Was Half Future Might. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this series and much more.